All right, it looks like we are live. Welcome, welcome. You are on my painting with Jesse Page, both on Facebook and on YouTube. On a little early as I usually like to do, just to give everyone a little time to find the feed. I want to say welcome to everyone that's going to be joining us today. Happy 4th of July, if I can, well, pre-4th of July, right? Today is July 3rd, so uh, just doing a little early painting celebration. If somebody could give me an audio check, let me know that you can hear me okay by putting it in the comments. Hey, Jesse, I can hear you just fine. That would be fantastic. Everything checks fine over on my end. I did an audio check, video check, etc. but uh, I always need to verify. Okay, so again, first person on. Give me an audio check. And then, of course, as you jump on, please let me know where you're painting from, who you're painting with, and uh, what you're doing for 4th of July other than hanging out painting with me. Awesome. All right. Looks like quite a few of you are on already telling me that you can hear me. So that is great. Thank you so much. So who's on with me? Debbie Sanderson from the UK. How's it going, Debbie? Tina, what's happening? Diane, Maze, Beachup. And then there's Audrey Marie. What's happening, Audrey? Let's see. Jess Ann. All right. Claudia. <clears throat> Cheryl from Oklahoma. And then Rhinelander, Wisconsin, Northwoods, says Audrey Marie. Awesome. Fantastic, everybody. So, again, just want to welcome everyone to the page, to the channel. I'm on here a little bit early, as I like to do, just to give everybody a little time to uh, jump on. Patty Joe Woodard from New Mexico. What's happening, Patty? So, we're going to have a little fun today. What's happening, Anna Flores? Let's see. Good. Okay. Fantastic. You too, from San Jose. Okay, you're from you're in San Jose. Fantastic. Loretta Erdman from Michigan. Uh, walking in the parade as a jellyfish for our summer reading program. Oh, that sounds like fun. How hot is it out there in Michigan? Hopefully it's cooled down by the time you're in your in your jellyfish costume. Oh, uh, pretty cool though. Sounds sounds pretty cool. Let's see. Debbie Sanderson earlier tonight, only 9 p.m. listening to the soccer game. All right. What's happening, Laws? How are you? All right, everybody. So, like I said. I'm on here a little bit early. I'm going to start pouring out some of the colors that I'm going to be using. I'm painting with acrylic paint. And of course, what kind of 4th of July painting would it, would it be if I wasn't using red, white, and blue? So starting out with a little bit of basic blue. Now I'll go over the colors again once we get going. But of course, red, white, and blue. I'm just putting those out on my plate for the moment. I'll explain the painting here in just a little bit. I'm going to be painting on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Okay, and you guys all notice that part of the original canvas is covered. Uh, there's some paper at the bottom where I covered up the image. That's because there's more to this painting than what I posted in the, in the picture uh, earlier in the week. Okay, uh, I'll explain what's going on with that. <clears throat> We're only going to do what's visible. I have a reflection. Where's my red? I have a reflection in the water uh, in the original painting, and I'll... I'll uh, I'll show that to you guys in just a little bit. But anyway, so my red, white, and blue acrylic paint colors are going on my plate. I put those on here right now. Okay, you guys all see that? Got my little plate. That's what we're going to start with. So I'll have those ready. Yeah, there you go, Laz. Do it with the Union Jack. Absolutely. So if you guys want to play with the image a little bit, instead of having the red, white, and blue, uh, you know, the, the American flag in the sky, you could change it up whatever country you're from, the idea is to make the background kind of look like you've got clouds right in the sky. So, so all of this, you know, looks, looks kind of like clouds in the distance. I've got the blue, blue sky, and then the little stars in here are all kind of cloud shaped. So that's kind of the idea behind it. If you do decide to do a different flag, uh, I'd love to see what you create, but yeah, so that's kind of the, the, the way you would do the background. And then what helps it make it make it look like a sky is then you've got the sunset, right? The cloud and the sunset. You've got the, the hills in the distance. All of that lend to helping that background look like it's a sky with clouds in it. Okay. So, yeah, absolutely. If you want to play with it, please have uh, fun with that and send over a picture when you're all done. What's happening, Shauna Rice? Happy 4th to you. Cheryl Curtis says we are grilling ribs, steaks, and burgers. Yum. 
So Loretta says it's 90 degrees in Michigan. Okay, it's pretty warm. I'm not sure if you're wearing a costume, but uh, yeah, you know, probably gonna get a little hot in there in that costume. But uh, sounds like fun. Let's see. Jess says Pennsylvania. Sounds like you're in Pennsylvania. Awesome, fantastic. So we got a few. We got a couple of minutes actually. Just a couple of minutes before we officially start. Okay, and I don't know how big of a group we're going to be having today, but as usual. The video is being recorded, the session's being recorded, and it will be immediately available as soon as the session's done. You'll find it on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you're not able to paint with us today, you can come back and join in at a later time, either today, tomorrow, or the next day, et cetera. I know a lot of people are planning on doing it um, Monday or Tuesday, a couple of days after the 4th of July, but it's no big deal. You could, all, you could post this, you could, you could uh, hang this on your wall throughout the entire year, right? Just because it's a 4th of July theme doesn't mean it can't sit up on your wall uh, all year round. It's a patriotic thing, basically. So it's something that's good for all seasons. So, all right. And then Tina, what's happening in Alabama, Tina? Hope you're doing awesome today, getting all ready for uh, 4th of July. But all right, everyone. So we got a minute to go. Let's go ahead and start talking about today so we can get moving. We're going to get moving pretty quickly. Uh, let me show you guys what the what the rest of the painting looks like. Now, I want to make sure that everybody understands what I'm about to show you. We're not doing all of that. We're only doing what's shown in the picture, okay, in the painting here. That's all we're including. I have a reflection. There's water beneath there with a reflection in there. It's just too complex to do all in one sitting. And I didn't want to overwhelm you guys, but check this out. One day, I'm going to make prints of this. Sometime over the next couple of months, a couple of months, I'm planning, maybe a little more than that. I got too much going on, but I'm planning on making a print of this painting so that uh, maybe, you know, I could put it online and people that want to purchase uh, a print of it can do so. But we got this reflection in the water, right? The sky reflects into the water. The, the little uh, area in the foreground here under the trees also reflected in there. The trees reflected in the water. The little swings reflected in the water. So there's a lot... It, Quite a, quite a uh, bit of complexity in this piece. So again, I didn't want to make today's painting a little too uh, too complex. I want to keep it nice and nice and on the easier side. So, so this all down in here is not going to be included in today's session. That's why I kind of have it covered. But I did want to show you guys the complete thing. Um, turned out a little nicer than I expected when I started to make the Fourth of July. When I when I came up with the idea and kind of was playing with it. Came out a little nicer than I expected, but like I said, it's there's a lot of complexity in there uh, for today's session. So maybe in the future, I'll teach you guys the rest of that. But for now, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it like this, okay? We're gonna. This is so from here up is what we're going to be painting. I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch canvas, like I usually do on these more complex pieces. The colors besides red, white, and blue acrylic paint that I'm going to be using are. I've got a little bit of orange. This is going to be used for the clouds, right? The little clouds, orange clouds right above the horizon line. I've got a little bit of yellow for the sun and uh, also going to be using it for some of the reflections in the water, okay? We've got some uh, black, okay, very important. We've got some black for the silhouette of the tree, silhouette of the hill, and then the swing is also going to be in black. Those are my main colors. Let's see, red, white, blue, black, uh, the hill in the background that looks kind of purplish is actually just a mixture of the blue and red. And we'll talk about that when we get to that point. But the, the colors that I'm using today, black, red, white, blue, orange, yellow. And again, that purple mountain in the background is just a mixture of red and blue. Okay. Uh, in case you guys didn't hear me, I am working with acrylic paints. That's what I, I'm always using on this uh, page. So... If you're using something different, that's perfectly okay. Watercolors, colored pencils, chalk, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you, you've got that you're comfortable with, that's what you'll be using. At the end, I do plan on um, embellishing the painting with a little bit of acrylic of, of glitter paint. I've got a couple of bottles of glitter paint. Actually, I've got three different colors. I've got red, I've got blue, and then I've got a crystal uh, glitter that I'll be using. These are uh, Folk Art Glitterific brand. 
uh, glitter. And I'll be talking about those more towards the very end. That's the very last step to the piece. If you don't have glitter, don't worry about it. No big deal. Okay. So as far as brushes, and again, this is just a suggestion. Uh, if you have anything similar to this, you're going to be okay. Don't worry about having the exact brushes as I've got, but we're going to be starting off. I've got a large one inch flat brush that I'll be using. Okay. One inch flat brush. Basically, this is going to be good for the background. Maybe a little bit of a uh, detail work, but for the most part, this big one's going to be used for that background. Then I have a number six flat brush, just basically the same as what I just showed you, a smaller version of it. Okay. There's that. Then I have a number three flat brush. Okay. Again, just a small rectangular brush. These are all synthetic bristle brushes, by the way. Okay. Then I've got a number three flat brush. Sorry, these two are getting, these are mixed up. They're about the same size. So yep, let me get that one out of the way. Same size brush. And then I've got a number three round, okay? A little pointy thing. And then I've got a zero round, little pointy thing as well. These are for the details, things like the, the swing, the, um, you know, the, the ropes on the swing, and then some of the leaves on the edges can be done with a brush like this. The detail work in the water can be done with these little brushes, okay? now. I'm going to be showing you a couple of ways to make the leaves on the tree. Okay, one of those is going to, to involve some uh, cotton swabs. Okay, these Q-tips or you know they uh, they come in different brands, but just some cotton swabs uh, that I'm going to be using like this when I get to that tree. Again, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of different ways to, to make the tree. One is with a brush or a couple of brushes, and then uh, another one's going to involve cotton swabs. So if you want to have some cotton swabs handy. Perfect. If not, don't worry about it too much. You can get a similar effect or even better effect uh, with brushes. I also have paper towels. Always like to have lots of paper towels. They come in handy. They're good to clean up the brushes, but they're also good for uh, cleaning up messes, obviously. Uh, I've got a rinse cup with some water in it. Basically, in between steps, I do, uh, I do clean up my brushes in here, rinse them out so that they don't dry out on me in between steps. And then I like to use paper plates uh, as my palettes. I always have a few extra because I do mixes on them. I mix colors on uh, on uh, the other on extra plates, so I do have extra. But this is what I'm going to be starting with these three colors, red, white, and blue. All right, so if you guys are all ready to go, I am ready. Let me take a look really quick at the comments, see if anybody has any questions before we get moving. Yeah, hot and muggy, says Tina. Yeah, it's a little hot and muggy out here in California also. Let's see. <laughs> hey, my wife's on here, everybody. Erica's on here. She said she's in Idaho right now. She's visiting some friends in Idaho. Uh, and uh, let's see, what does she say? Star, Idaho, eating baked beans and ribs. Woohoo! Awesome. All right, who else is on here? Kim Keys, really nice painting. I never knew you could put the painting in water and paint on it later. Painting in water and paint on it later. That's really cool to know. Uh, let's see, Lori Murphy, what's happening? I think I already said hello to you, but just in case, what's happening, Lori? But all right, guys, looks like we're ready to go. Let me go ahead and change the view on the screen here so that you mainly see the painting. So here's what I want to point out on the piece. Uh, speaking of proportions, this area down in here where the, where the purple hill starts off in the background, and that's what we're actually going to start with here in just a moment, takes up about a fifth of the image. So if I do this with my fingers just to do a quick gauge, I go one, two, three, four, five. There are about five of these within the painting. So really quickly, what you can do to kind of give you a gauge as to where that's going to sit on your canvas, regardless of what size you've got, just take your fingers, kind of do this, go one, two, three, four, that's too big. So then I lessen them a little bit. I want to make sure I've got enough to be able to, so I want the same proportion, same ratio to the, uh, for that image to my to my canvas. So one, two, three, four, still a little bit too big. I'm gonna lessen a little bit more. One, two, three, four, there we go. So right there, all I'm going to do, let's see, I'm gonna do this with a chalk. I'm just gonna, you can do it with a little piece of pencil. All I'm doing is marking off the, the area for this background purple hill that we're gonna start with, okay? So again, all I did was just take take my fingers, because that's about a fifth of the original image and I want to 
try to match it up. I got one, two, three, four, five, about, okay? Don't worry about, you don't need to measure exactly or anything like that. I just want to do a quick visual. Uh, that's how you do a kind of a quick assessment. So you have a similar ratio to the original. So I'm going to start with my number six flat brush. I mentioned that I've got this little hill in the back. That's what we're going to start with. That's a combination color of, uh, I combined some red and some blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue, more blue than red. Don't need a lot of it though. Just going to bring it over to an extra plate. I'm going to be mixing this color over there. Now I'm going to scoop up some red. Let's see my image. I sure am. Okay. Now I bring some of that red over. I'm going to bring over a little bit more. I'm going to mix both of these colors together. But well, watch what I do here. <clears throat> I bring my color that's on my, the paint that's already on my brush. I just bring it over down here a little bit. Okay, I want to lighten it up a little in just a moment. And maybe I'm going to use a little bit of white to lighten it up. Okay, yep. That's a little too dark for what I want. Okay, again, I just mix some red and some blue. I'm going to scoop up some white nice and easy. Bring it over. I'm going to lighten that up. Okay, so red, blue, and then a little bit of white. All you're trying to do is get a little bit of a purplish color. It can be a little bit more blue of a more uh, bluish purple or a red or purple kind of up to you. The original is almost more of a blue purple, but I'm using white to change the value to brighten it up a little bit. Okay. So again, just introducing some of the white. Once I've got a color similar to what I want or close enough, it doesn't have to match the original. It can just come close. Once I've mixed my color, all good to go. A little bit more red there. There we go. I think that'll do it. Okay, so we got our little mark here at the bottom. Okay, where I started with my chalk. What I'm going to do right now is taking my the, the thin edge uh, on my brush. I'm going to create that horizon line. This line that drops down like this and then comes back up. Okay, we're starting right here. Now, a couple of things to notice, and you don't have to do it this way. It's entirely up to you. The right side is a little bit higher than my left side. So maybe, since I want to maintain that kind of similar look, I'm just going to make a little line over on the right-hand side that's a little higher than the one on my left. So now I'm going to come across. It gives me a little point to work towards. And I'm just kind of slowly going to come across. There's a little... Depression comes back up, slowly kind of climbs up and does that, okay? Once I've got this, I can go in there and fill the rest of it in all the way down. So this is a little hillside that sits further back. It's in the background of our image, okay? So just want to color all of this in, even though we're going to have that uh, black area in the front, the, the profile or sorry, the um, silhouette of that hill in the front where the tree's gonna sit on top of. We wanna color all of this area in the front with this, uh, with this paint. Do we have to do it that way? Nope, but it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about uh, creating the edge for that, the, the hill silhouette in the front, okay? Doing it this way, you just go through, oops, gonna make a little bit more here, a little mix a little bit more paint, starting to run out. And that's one thing you want to, usually I, I'm conscious of how much paint I mix. I like to have enough to uh, cover the entire area that I'm working with at any one time. But for this, it's not super, super important that it's all completely uniform and one color. So just going to go through, cover all of this in the front. You do want to, you do want to use a thick enough layer of paint where you cover everything up quite nicely. It can be a little bit blotchy, but you want to avoid having too much blotchiness in this. We're only gonna do this one time. This part right here, <coughs> excuse me, we're only going to do it once, meaning I'm not gonna come back and do a second layer over this, okay? Now, what I like to do often when I'm painting on canvas is I'll take whatever I'm putting in the front and I wrap it around the back to the edges. So I'm just gonna take this paint and wrap it around to the left. And then same thing on the right-hand side, just wrap it around. Okay. 
there we go. So for those of you that have been painting with me for a little bit, you guys know how I do this. I give you a little time in between steps to implement whatever I show you. So we're gonna take about a minute or two <clears throat> while I look over at your comments to let you guys catch up. Make sure you answer, you ask any questions and stuff like that. If you have a, <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys have any questions about anything, put it in the comments. In between steps, I'll step over to my laptop here and see what you guys have to say. What's happening, Adriana, in Arizona? What's up? Hope you're all having an awesome day out there in Arizona. Let's see. Debbie Sanders says, Sanderson has a question. Never used acrylic. How different are they to use? Uh, sorry, Debbie, but in comparison to what? What have you used? Um, that way I can give you a comparison. Um, but, um, you know, as opposed to oils, as opposed to watercolors, uh, etc. Okay, so let me know and then maybe I can give you some some ideas. All right, everyone. About 30 more seconds and we're moving on here. What's happening, Cindy DeSoto? What's going on today? Thanks to all of you for stopping by, hanging out, painting, even if you're just stopping to say hello. Again, this is all being recorded and the video will be available immediately after the live session is all done. But all right, everyone, let's go ahead and move on from this. Uh, so we're gonna leave this alone for now. We're gonna leave this area down at the bottom. We're gonna let it sit a little while. Uh, as we move on, we're actually going to start working on the sky next. And we're going to stop start here at the top, okay? Uh, while we're working on the sky, all this down in here is drying, which is going to allow us a little time to, uh, to work on that sky. But then we're going to come back in, and uh, once this is all dry, we'll add the hill in black, okay? So let's do this. Uh, we're going we're gonna to mix a lighter or medium blue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is my deep blue that I've got here, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna be using my one inch brush here, my one inch flat. I'm gonna grab this. <clears throat> I've got this old plate here. It's got some old dried up glitter on it. I'm just gonna bring this over like this. Okay, now I'm going to scoop up some white paint. Okay, just carefully scoop up some of the paint from my main palette and bring it over to the mix plate like this. I want to create a, a lighter blue, almost an, a medium blue, if, we, if you want to refer to it that way. Color that's in between the dark, this dark blue that I've got. About, uh, let's see, not quite a light blue. It's kind of a medium blue color, okay? And I'm going to use this color here, this lighter blue color, to create a base in this area right in here. All of this is going to take this. So what I'm gonna do, maybe about a third, almost halfway across the top of my canvas, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna create the outer edge, I'm using the, again, the flat part of my brush, and I'm going to come down, let's see, I'm gonna come down to about, since this is a larger canvas, let's see here, yeah, I'll come down about a third of the way down. Okay, we're gonna do this. So this is about a third, maybe, <clears throat> maybe not, We'll go a little more than that. Not quite uh, half. Let's see, this is actually about a third. One, two, three, yep. About a third of the way down. You could go a little larger than that. You could go a little smaller than that. Doesn't make a huge difference. So this is the dark, the light blue base or lighter blue base under what's going to be that blue part of the sky where the stars are. And this does not have to be really smooth. It can be choppy and uneven, the edges especially. Remember, this is kind of a cloud. You're, if you imagine you're looking at a, a big blue cloud. And we're gonna have the deeper blue gonna sit on top of this in, a, in just a little bit. I'm gonna take this and bring it around to the top edge. And then I'm gonna take it and also take it around to the left edge. 
All right, Cindy, sounds like fun. Going swimming after this, huh? Pretty cool. Now I'm using the, the edge of the brush to create these little lines that pop, come out a little bit. Now if you go a little further than halfway across your canvas, you're okay. Okay, try not, try not to go too far over, maybe no more than half, but right around there is okay. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, same brush. I'm just going to clean it a little bit. Oh, let me grab a paper towel here. I'm just going to use my paper towel here to squeeze out this extra, the excess paint on the brush. Don't have to clean it up perfectly. Just want to remove a lot of that paint. Now I'm going to scoop up some of this dark blue, the original blue. Now, the base right now, the base light blue color is, is still pretty wet. So these two colors are going to blend a little. Now, later on, once this is dry, I will add another layer of this dark blue. For now, I'm just going to go through here and create a nice little blend between these two, these two colors. I'm not going to come out all the way to the edges. Okay, I just want to stop partway. As I come across, I stop partway out. I do come a little close. Again, these two colors are mixing a little bit, right? It's kind of what I want. Not kind of, it is what I want. I want the two colors to mix. Okay, something like that. Now this is thick. I'm layering on this paint nice and thick. I want it to be, have a little bit of dimension and a little, little bit of depth. Okay, and that's about it for now. Later on, like I said, once this is all dried, we'll add another layer of the dark blue over that. And um, that'll make for a really nice dark base on top of which we can put those white clouds over, okay? So just cleaning up my brush a little bit because we're gonna use it again. I wanna clean it up, I wanna rinse it off. And I do wanna remove all of this blue. Okay, I wanna make sure it's all gone, very important. Now I'm gonna take my brush here, squeeze out that extra paint. But all right, any questions? What's happening, Cindy Kasky, how are you? Any questions, any comments, don't forget, folks, let me know where you're hanging out with us from. Where are you? Who are you hanging out with? Who are you painting with? Let us know in the comments. Are you celebrating anything today other than the 4th of July? Maybe you got an anniversary, a birthday, etc. Let us know in the comments so we can celebrate with you. Okay? So take about another minute on this step, and then we move on to uh, the stripes. We're going to start with those red stripes here in just a moment. Well, hello there, Jill. Jill says, Claremont, Florida, in the rain. Oh, okay, so it's raining out there. Is it cold or is it is it the, you know, kind of a tropical rain that you got going through there? I know sometimes, I was in Florida a couple of times and uh, some of the rainfall, I think I was, in the, I was there during the summer, I'm trying to remember. And I remember I was in Miami, I was in, ooh, Miami, Dade, Dade County also, I think. Um, and, um, yeah, I remember the rainfall. It was a little bit muggy. It was muggy, hot, a little sticky. <clears throat> but all right, everyone, here we go. Big brush. Okay, I'm going to grab, I'm going to take some red now. Now, if you've got a really deep red, you're going to want to mix it with some white. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this red here. I'm going to bring it over to my mix plate once again. Okay, again, don't mind all this dried paint over here. This is dried glitter paint. I'm just reusing a plate. I'm going to bring some of that red over. I'm going to scoop up some white. Okay. I'm going to bring that over to my plate as well. Just going to have them sitting next to each other. There's my red. There's my white. Then somewhere over here, I'm going to mix the two a little bit to create. It's not a perfect blend where it's complete. the two colors are completely mixed. I want there to be a little bit of a, of a, of a swirliness to it, meaning I can see a little bit of red, a little bit of pink, and then even a little bit of white. Okay, once I've got that, 
nice and thin. I don't have a whole lot of paint on here. What I'm going to do, let's see here. Let me bring that up a little. Don't, I don't want that get, to get in the way. Now, this paint in here, the blue part, is, is a little wet still, so you want to be careful, right? I'm just going to grab some of this. We're going to start creating our stripes. Now, the flag, the American flag, has seven red stripes. Now, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to make just so that you guys are aware in case you're not. I'm sure most of you know that. Uh, you can make, you know, seven. I think mine has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can make it so that yours has seven. You know, just uh, five will work. It's up to you how many of the stripes are visible in your sky. And then in between my stripes, I've got about, let me see, maybe about an inch and a half, two inches. But you want to be conscious of how much space you have uh, to work with, right? So if my last stripe down here is going to be somewhere over here, and maybe I'll just go ahead and put it in for now. I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way across. Again, this paint is nice and thin. I'm spreading it. What I mean by thin is it's not very thick. I can also take a little bit of water to thin it out, thin it out even more. Just take a little bit of water, put it into that paint. Whoops, scooped up a little tiny bit of blue by accident. That's all right. It's not enough to make a big difference. So just going to go with it. So work. You know, visualize where your stripes are going to be first. So I've got my top stripe and then the bo my bottom stripe. And I just want to make sure I want to, I want to kind of keep them somewhat evenly spaced. So I've got one and have another one right here, three right here, four right here, five, six. Perfect. So just did a quick uh, visual. Again, they don't have to be in the exact same uh, they don't have to be the exact same distance apart from each other. So just gauge it a little bit. And then the, you don't want them perfectly even all the way across or they're going to look like actual stripes on a flag. You want to leave them nice and uneven throughout so they look more like clouds. It's kind of what gives you that cloud effect. Whoops, and I just picked up more blue with my brush. So let me clean it up a little. I don't want purple stripes. I want red stripes. All right. Okay. So here we go. Later on, we will come back over these and add some of these areas that you see that are a little bit darker. Okay. I got some pinkish, pinkish red, and I got some deeper red. The deeper red, we come back in and add over the stripes to, again, we want some variation in there. And that's what makes them look like clouds. So what did I say the other one was going to be about right here? And then my fourth one will be about right here. So, yeah, so let's see. Okay. So I'm feathering the brush across my canvas. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. I do vary it a little bit as I go across. And then in just a little bit, you don't have to do this, but you can take your red and wrap it around your edges just like I did with the blue. Okay, so there's that fourth stripe. Let's go ahead and do the fifth one, which is going to be, let's see, yeah, about right here. Okay, then one more. Here we go. Where's that one going to sit? About right there. Now, again, no need to bust out a ruler and try to measure the exact distance between those stripes. They are clouds, after all. Just, just get them kind of, kind of evenly spaced, and you're going to be all right. So just going to take a little bit of a deeper color, deeper red color than my original mixture, and just going to come in here. We're not done with these stripes. We'll come back later and refine them a little bit more, adding some more of that deeper red. And of course, this one right here is mostly <clears throat> going to get covered up by that orange cloud. So not too worried about that, that one there. All right.
that top stripe was a little too even across, so in other words, too uniform, my line. Just softening up my edges a bit. Just taking the edge of my brush here. It's got a little bit of paint left. Just going to soften up some of my edges so my lines aren't so straight, my edges. All right. That works right there. Winnie McAdams in Louisiana with my son and daughter-in-law in Leesville. Awesome. Fantastic, Winnie. So as I often like to do, I'll take a little step back, look at my painting from a distance, see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to take your red stripes and wrap them around the edges of your canvas, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So just taking some of the red, bringing it around to the edge on the left for each stripe. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right for the other side. No right or wrong to this. This is just a choice that I like to make with most of my paintings. And then I'll take my red stripe. Why not? Touches the edge. So I'm just going to bring it across the top edge of my canvas as well. Just like that. Okay. So now I'm going to take my brush one more time. I'm going to take it, stick it into my rinse cup, clean it up, remove a lot of that red. In just a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white. Okay, I'm going to take some white and a touch of yellow, a touch of yellow. Okay, taking a paper towel here, squeezing out that extra paint. I've got a little tiny bit of blue left in the brush. I could, my water, so the water in my rinse cup has taken a blue tint because I've, I cleaned up my brush earlier. I'm actually going to use that water, that tint in the water. It's really, really subtle. Okay, I'm going to use that. Let's see here. Let me do this on a different plate. So I've got, again, I've got another plate here. I used it before. It's, all, it's got all this paint that's dried on it. But I'm going to take some of this water, this blue water, and I'm going to place it on the plate like this. Okay, just kind of drop that in there. I'm going to take my brush now and scoop up some white paint. I'm going to need some more here. Give me a sec while I pour that out. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that white paint with the water. I want there to be really, really subtle tint to my white paint. It's going to be hard to detect. And against the canvas, you may not see the difference. But it's just a subtle, subtle difference. I don't want to have a really stark white sky. Okay, and in just a bit, we'll add a little bit of yellow to this also. But for now, again, just a slightly tinted bluish uh, to my white, okay? Blue to my white. Now I'm going to scoop this up. I blend it in really nicely. That water also helps the paint flow a little bit better. And I'm just going to come in here and in between my red stripes. Now you want to be careful. Now, you know what I'm going to do actually? I told you guys in the, uh, in the supplies list to have a blow dryer handy. So I'm going to use my blow dryer to dry the, my my red stripes in the sky. So I just want to dry the red so it doesn't mix in to my white, okay? That'll do it. If you don't have a dryer handy, just give it a little time to dry. Just to avoid, again, it just makes it so that you avoid mixing the red and the white paint together. You can overlap if they're dry, and that's okay. But if the red paint is still wet, obviously it's going to mix in with the white and it's going to turn pinkish. We don't want that. Okay. So again, you can overlap a little bit. You can also overlap a little bit in some of the areas for your blue. 
the blue part of your sky. Now I'm going to take a little tiny bit of yellow, just a touch of yellow. And to these stripes from here down, they're going to start reflecting some of the, some of the yellow from the sun. So a little tiny bit of yellow on my paint palette here, just a drop, a little more than a drop, but just a little tiny bit. I'm also going to be using that for the sun. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that, just a little tiny bit. Okay. And I'm going to bring it over to my mix plate. Now I'm going to mix that in with that white and I want it swirly. I want, I don't want an even, a complete even blend. I want it to be a little bit swirly like that where I can see some white, some yellow, a little bit on my brush here. I'm going to take that. Again, this is because this part of the sky is going to be reflecting some of that sunlight. So that yellow sunlight coming off of that sun. And again, we can overlap a little bit. Down in here some more. Be careful I don't get any of that paint on my hill. So let's focus down here a little. And then I'm going to take the paint, wrap it around the edges again, once again. So if you watch, I'm holding my brush here. When you try to mimic it, you're going to get some similar results. A lot of it depends on your type of brush and your paint and everything else. But again, if it's nice. In this case, it's a nice loose grip. But if you can kind of match what I do, you're going to get some similar results. Okay. But all right, there we go. There's my sky. Like I said, in a little bit, I can come in there. And I'll do this here in just a moment. Uh, after I put in my orange for my background here, I'll come in and uh, add a little bit more red to my stripes. All right. Okay, what's happening, Maria? What is happening with everyone today? Hope you're all having a fantastic day and that you all have you all enjoy tomorrow. I know a bunch of people out are out and about, you know, celebrating uh, having a nice long weekend, which, you know, uh, I know a lot of people are going to come back and do this during the week. So, all right. So about a minute, folks, and we move on to the next step. Again, always take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance, make sure that, you know, proportionately, things like that, everything's looking the way you want. You always want to take a step, when you're finished with a step, take a step back, look at the entire image. That way you know you know, um, it gives you better perspective and you're able to assess. If you're up close to the painting the entire time, sometimes you develop a little bit of a tunnel vision. So take a little step back, look from a distance, and then we go from there. Okay. What's up, Sue? Sue Kripe is in the house. What's going on? How are you today? Sue, are you painting or just stopping by to say hello? Okay. So the next step. Is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and create this orange cloud back here. Okay, now I've got a really deep orange uh, that I'm going to go ahead and use here. My, uh, I've got this liquid acrylic yellow medium. It was the original color, but I mixed in whoop I mixed in some red and some orange to make this really deep orange in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take. I'm actually going to take. Uh, one of my smaller flat brushes. This is a number four flat. Okay. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to scoop up. Don't need a lot of this orange. It's really deep. It's really strong. Awesome, Sue. Okay. I'm just going to grab 
about this much for now. And I'm going to bring it over to a mixed plate, okay? I'm gonna grab some yellow and mix it in with that as well. So I'm scooping up some yellow. Okay, bring it over to the side for now. And then I can just kind of start blending the two colors together over here. Again, nice and swirly. When I say, when you hear me say swirly, it just basically mean, uh, means that the color that I'm mixing is not a perfect mix. I want to see some of uh, some shades in there, variation of shades. And we're going to start with this. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit more of the orange now. I got some of this blend, the orange and yellow blend, and I on my brush, then I scooped up some more of the orange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start, let, let me move uh, a mix plate out of the way here. And let me sit down for a moment. Okay, again, my number four flat brush. I got a lot of paint on here. Okay, I'm gonna come in here like this. I'm gonna start right in here. Watch how I'm holding the brush nice and loose towards the handle and I'm just swirling around in here, using the edge of the brush right in here around the hill. I'm just gonna come around like this, follow the edge, and then continue. Okay. The paint that I'm applying is, is kind of thick in some areas, and then in other areas it thins out a little bit. That combined with the swirliness within the paint gives me a variation in there, a nice little variation that makes it look like a cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across, let's see, my cloud's going to go about all the way over there. So let me go ahead and outline the edge of my hill. And then from there, I'm just going to, I'm just going to bring this over a little bit. It's going to give me, it's going to create, I'm going to create the, uh, the size of my cloud right now, more or less. And then it's going to come over like this, probably in here somewhere. Come back down, come over. And then how high do I want this cloud to go? I want it to go up there somewhere. Okay, something like that. Always make, when you're making clouds, I like, I personally like to make them a little smaller than what I'm envisioning it's going in to end up as, because I can always add more size to it as I go. If I make it too big, though, that's harder to fix. So start a little bit on the smaller side, and as you're going, you can reassess and then add more a little bit at a time as you go. It's just a little bit, a little bit of a safer way to create something like a cloud. Okay, so take a little step back, look at it from a, from a little bit of a distance. I'm gonna raise this up a little higher. Now I'm maintaining a rough edge on the edges of my cloud. Okay, I'm just using the edges of my brush. I can even turn my brush. As I'm doing this, I can turn the brush, turning it as I'm doing that. So I'm using different edges, different parts of the brush to create this, this edge. I'm also using it to modify the, sh the shape. All right. Now, if you want, if you've want a little bit more, little bit more of a red in that cloud, you would take a little tiny bit of red, tiny bit of red. Okay. A little bit. The red is really strong in pigment, pigment, generally speaking, mix it in with your orange a little bit, just a touch. And then you could add this maybe down in here because the paint underneath is still wet. They're going to blend pretty easily. Somewhere in here is where my son's going to sit. If you're having 
if you, as you're doing this, you're noticing that you've got some really light areas where the canvas is coming through and you're having a hard time getting it to cover your canvas. Don't worry about that right now. Simply create the cloud shape, do what I'm doing, and then we're going to move on. We'll come back to it later. And before we add in the sun, even out, we can still do it afterwards. We'll add a little bit more paint if we need to. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a close-up here in just a moment. All right. So here's my close-up. This is what it looks like at the moment. Okay. Again, I can always come back in there and add a little bit more red later. Or more, uh, more of whatever color I want that cloud to look like. Again, though, you do want to take a little step back look at your piece from a distance. I'm going to make my cloud a little larger. Okay, I'm just going to bring it up here. Why? Just a choice. When I step back and look at it, it just feels like I need to make this a little bit bigger. All right, there we go. So you got about a minute before we move on to the next step. I was about to try to drink some water with the cap on. <laughs> I have not had anything to drink other than water, I swear. Okay. Again, take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance, make sure that everything looks good before we move on to the next step. And that next step is we're actually going to go ahead and uh, create the, the hill in the front, okay? All this black area in the front, uh, we're gonna create that right now, okay? Hi, Loretta, how's it going? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pour out a little bit of uh, black paint onto my palette here okay and then this acrylic paint that I'm about to use here this black is from the fine touch I picked this up at Hobby Lobby pretty good good uh, quality um, kind of starter paint okay it, um, maybe not starter medium range and I'm going to take my number eight flat brush Okay, this guy right here. Now, I've got my black paint right here. I'm gonna grab some of this. Let me see, let me find another, another old mix plate with dried paint that I can use. Okay, so right in here, all this is dry from a different day's painting. I'm gonna grab some black paint. I'm gonna bring it over. Okay, I'm gonna do this a couple of times because I need quite a bit of black paint. I'm also gonna take my brush. I'm gonna scoop it into my rinse cup. I'm gonna bring some of that water over and let it drip onto my paint and then I'm gonna mix it in. So all this is is black paint and a little bit of water. Mixing the two together, blending it in really nicely. All the water does is it, it does a couple of things. It can thin out your paint. It also makes it easier, more flowy, easier to work with. So here's what I wanna point out before we actually get to painting. So a couple of things. I'm gonna start, so here's my, here's my hill, the top of the little hill that eventually is gonna be where the tree sits, right? But right here at the bottom, somewhere down here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create that line first. So, cause I want, so this down here is water, right? There's a reflection from here down, from this line across down is water. And it's just, it's simply reflecting the image above. So you wanna kind of gauge down here where that's going to be. Uh, you could, if you want, so this area right here, you could kind of go, okay, so my hill, my the hill in the front is going to be about right here. Okay. So that's that part right there. And then the hill over here, the black uh, line on this side, 
the outline is going to be about right there. Let's start with that. Okay, I'm just going to create my little hill. Just kind of does this. Comes down also in a little bit of to a bit of a depression. Comes back up, and that's just the rough outline. I can always come in here and add detail to that in a little bit. But what I want is I want to create the bottom edge of that hill. So like right in here somewhere. I'm just going to go across. both sides right and I'm gonna go ahead and color that in for now so from there up actually let me make sure my lines pretty straight here okay and there we go now I'm just gonna take my paint and if you've got thicker paint and you're having a hard time getting that paint to spread onto your canvas you want to go ahead and, and uh, add a little bit of water to your mixture. That water is like magic. It just helps that paint, makes it flow a little bit easier. Now, you don't have to have any water in yours. Okay, you don't have to have any water in your, um, in your image, in your painting. Maybe yours is all, down in here, it's all just black, right? So you would make your hill the horizon line for your hill, and then from there down, you would paint in black. Okay, what I'm going to do now, once I've got this here, actually, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you about a minute to catch up to this. Before I go ahead and uh, do anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe uh, make some changes to the edge right here, make it a little rougher. Everyone's hill is going to look a little different. Don't worry about that too much. Just give me a hill. Put a little, put a little, a little hill on your painting, and then uh, don't worry too much about the rest of it. I am going to take my paint, wrap it around my edges, both sides. All right. <clears throat> now here's what you want to look at. So if this is all water in here, <clears throat> um, I, let me see here, just so that I can mark off my edge, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush here. I'm gonna dip it into a little bit of my white paint. Okay, let me grab some of this, bring it over. Okay, and what I'm going to do is using that white and that black, it's gonna mix a little bit. I just want a light edge down there. So again, black, a little bit of white, kind of creating a grayish color. I'm just going to come through here, put in this rough line so that I know that from there down is the reflection in the water. Why does it matter? Because right here, this little area right here, the uh, you're going to reflect the hill, but it's not a very, this edge is kind of small. The, the height here is going to reflect into the water, and then you're going to see some of that sky or some of that blue mountain in the background. Okay? So, so just a little detail that makes a big difference. So what you want to do when you reflect that hill into the water, right here is where it's crucial. You're just going to take your fingers and measure that, bring it down, and then there, that is a mirror image of the hill in the water. So you're only going to have that little area down there <clears throat> that you could see of the mountain. So in here is where you can see that top part of your mountain, right in there. Other than that, the rest of this is all going to be black. So then I just take my brush and fill the rest of that in. I know that might have been a little bit complicated, but since the reflection in the water is the mirror image of what's above the water. You want to be able to see a little bit of that water down in here because of that hill up there. Okay. And then again, other than that, the rest of this, now I'm not covering up that white or grayish line that I put in to divide the water from what's above it, I'm not going to cover that. I want to see that. Uh, 
again, if this is, if this didn't make any sense, or you don't care about having water in yours, you do not have to put water in there, or you could simply make all that from the all that down dark, and it'll still work. So this is what mine looks like. I can just see a little bit of the reflection of that mountain down at the bottom. Okay, hopefully that made sense. All right. Okay, as far as what's down here in the water, we're going to leave that alone for a bit later and we're going to come in and add these lines, these little squiggly lines in there. Um, creates a little bit of, a, of, a, of water flow. Okay, so take a moment, take about a minute on that, maybe two minutes. Let me give you guys a close up. Since right here, that edge, I outlined that edge in that gray. Okay, that's where the water, that's the horizon line for the water. Okay, then if you're reflecting your hill into the water, of course, it depends on how much space you've got down here. It all, how much space you've got in here depends, uh, will affect how much of the mountain above it or the ground above the water is reflected into the water. Okay, so whatever the space is, if you bring it up like this, that'll tell you how much of that is going to be reflected in the water. So if you go like this and go up like this, you know that there's a little bit of that blue peeking in down at the bottom. Okay. But okay, I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to use, I'm going to grab one of my little flat brushes. Okay, a little uh, tiny thing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some black. Again, bring it over to my mix plate. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and paint in the tree. Okay, the trunk. Mixing in a little little bit of water into my paint. Again, we want to make sure the paint flows nicely. So a little, little bit of water in here. Also, folks, please uh, make sure you send pictures of your paintings to me. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. If you're on uh, Painting with Jesse uh, here on Facebook, you can message them to me. Send them to send me pictures uh, through Messenger. If you are on YouTube, you can email those to me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Again, Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Send me pictures to Painting with Jesse via Messenger. And then YouTube, send me pictures via email, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. So black little flat brush. I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's look at the tree for a moment. Right in here, this area of the trunk comes about, so on my 16 by 20 inch canvas, I'm going to bring that, I want that to be about right here. I want to leave enough room up in here for all the leaves above, okay? But I want, and I, I want to, I don't want to go too high. I don't want to go too low. I don't want to make it super tiny. I want that part to be about right in here somewhere. So I'm going to take my little brush here. I'm just going to put a little dot on my canvas where I imagine, where, where I envision this part of my trunk about, about where that part of the trunk is going to be. From there, I'm using the skinny part of my brush. And I'm just going to come down really skinny at first. Okay, nice and skinny. We always go skinny. Uh, what color do you have underneath the gray line? Black, Adriana. Yeah, it's black. Yeah, all of this is black, except for that blue. Except for the blue right here. That blue or blue purple is the same color that I, right? It's that, it's that here. Because I only, because I brought my, so this blue down here is the original color that's on the background, that down there. But this is gray, and then below that is black. The same black that I used up here. Okay. What's happening, Jill? How are you? But okay. So again, really skinny on the tree. Then I can slowly add a little bit of thickness to it. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Make it as big as you'd like. Always start skinny, though, just so you can easily correct. 
I mean, it's easy to make it bigger if it's too skinny. If it's too big though, too thick, that can be harder to fix. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the little branches. I'm gonna start with the one here, over here on, to the left. I'm just gonna bring this over like this, comes across. Again, still using the skinny part of my brush, okay? Then let's see, other way. Got a branch that goes the other way. Kind of bends out, go like that. Okay. Here at the base, I want to, I want the base to be a little bit thicker and it rounds out just a bit. Okay. You got it, Adriana. Oh, for sure, Jill. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by and saying hi. Hope you have an awesome day. Have fun. All right. Another branch from right here. Again, I'm still using the skinny part of my brush. I'm just gonna come up, go like that. Just wanna remind everyone, everyone's paintings are gonna look a little different. Okay, go up like that. Don't stress too much. Have fun with the process. Relax a little bit. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a touch of white for this next part. Don't need a lot of it. Okay. A little bit of white. I want to mix that in with some black to create a really deep gray. So white and black to create a really deep gray. I just want to contrast between the original black color and, the gr and this dark gray that I'm about to use. Now I'm going to use the same brush here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a base for, um, for my tree leaves. But I, and I, am going to, I am going to overlap that with just black later. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also do this next step with Q-tips. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to talk about it now. Okay. Bunched up Q-tips like this. I got four of them. You can have five. You can use six. You can do this. I actually wouldn't do this till the, till the next step or you can actually, it doesn't really matter too much. You can go like this. Okay. Just dip those Q-tips right in there and start to do this. Okay. And just start building up this, your tree this way. However, what I like to do if I'm going to use Q-tips and again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do that. So with the Q-tips, you would just do this a, bu a whole bunch, a whole bunch, a whole bunch, a bunch until you start creating density. You, you basically continue to do this. If you have six, seven Q-tips bunched together, it goes a little bit faster. And for some people, it's easier this way. But again, just, let me grab a little bit more of that. All you would be doing is this. Overlapping, overlapping. And as you do this, the more you build on this, the more dense your tree leaves are going to get, the thicker everything becomes, but that overlapping with different pressure, different parts of the Q-tips, you're turning them around, you're turning them, doing this, you start to create uh, varying density within your paint. And so that creates a layering process, along with the layering process starts to give you a little bit of a 3D effect. What I like to do is this, again, using that dark gray that I just created, instead what I'm going to do I can always use the Q-tips for my, for my edges, but for now, what I'll do, I got a little bit of water mixed into this paint. I'm creating a layer that I'm gonna come across, um, I'm gonna come and paint up on top of, once it's dried, once this layer dries here, I'm gonna come back and paint on top of it with just black. But what I'm doing here, again, look how I'm holding my brush, nice loose grip, nothing, Nothing crazy about this. I'm creating this base. I'm also kind of creating the edges of where the leaves are going to go. But what I'm doing, when I come in here to the inside, when I come in here to the inside, I leave some areas without any paint, kind of some, some or some of the skies coming through, right? I don't, I'm not adding leaves everywhere. Some of these little areas that come through is, 
it's just that sky, right? There's there's sky coming through in between some of these leaves. So I come down and I touch, I touch the branches, I come back up. But I do this, I work this slowly. I don't want to go too big too fast. Because again, if you go, if you add too much, that's hard to fix. You then have to remove paint. Can get a little bit messy. It can be done, but it can get pretty messy. So work your edges. How big do you want? How much of these leaves do you want? How big is that top of your tree? Again, using a nice little flat brush right here, just coming around to the edges. Work my way down. Purposefully, purposefully leaving some of that sky coming through in some spots. Okay. All right, let me make some more of this dark gray. So just made more of that dark gray. Add a little bit of water to it. <clears throat> and here we go. Let's continue. So down here, how far down do we want to go? Slowly. So later, as I mentioned, once this once this layer dries, we can come back with just black paint and layer over the top of it. And that's going to give our tree some density and dimension. When I'm doing this around the edges, I'm turning my brush. Using the different parts of the brush to create, to create the edge. And then I can kind of do this. Okay, now if you wanted to, <clears throat> and again, you could save this step for last when we do the layering with the black, but with your Q-tips, and you maybe you only need a couple of them when you're working around your edges. So using the Q-tips like this, I just grab them together. I'm only using two in this case. I dip them into my paint and I'll come around my edges. And I, again, same thing, turn your Q-tips a little bit as you go using that variation, that change, by using different parts of the Q-tips, you create um, an edge that varies. You create variation in your edges. Okay, then all the way around. All right. Again, take a step back. Look at your painting from a distance. What does it look like? Are you happy with it? What's the shape of your tree? In my case, I'm going to bring my sh this out a little bit more so it looks more like the original. I like that. I like that tree a little bit better, so I want to match it a little. And again, we're going to layer this tree. We're going to come back in a little bit. That second layer makes a big impact. So if your tree is a little bit transparent right now or too transparent where you're seeing a lot of that background bleeding through, don't stress about that too much. That can be fixed when we do the second layer. Remember you want to leave some little, little areas in between the leaves where some of that background light is coming through from the sky. So. The toughest thing on this painting is likely, for many of you, going to be the, the ropes on the string, uh, the ropes on the, on the swing. 
because they're so skinny. Again, I'll show you a couple of ways to make those. A nice flat brush with a stiff edge. Stiff skinny edge will do the trick. You're using a round brush, a little small round brush like the number zero that you could use or anything that's really skinny will also work. But the flat brush might be the way to go. All right. We're getting there. Sounds good, Sophie. How are you? <clears throat> a lot of you guys, yeah. Thank you guys for stopping by. Carolyn, Anita, Pamage, Sophie, Donna, Robin. Yeah, absolutely. You guys can paint this later. I know lots of people busy this weekend with 4th of July stuff. Absolutely. But yeah, come on back and paint this when you have the time. Absolutely. Okay, so just refining my edges. And you guys notice I'm going rather slowly here, working my way around. There's a little bit of patience involved here. A little bit of monotony, right? Because you're having to dab, 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 dab as you're working your way, around, your way around. But you don't have to do this all at once. You could work your tree in a little, a little bit at a time. Okay, as you'll see here in a moment, we're going to move up here and start refining the sky a little bit more. Um, but you want to have a nice, create a nice base for what's going to be the rest of your tree. We're not going to do the swing until later. I don't want you guys stressing about that right now. But yeah, so take a little time on your tree. Take a little step back. Look at it from a distance. What does it look like? Where does it need corrections? Where do you need to, you know, maybe... Uh, add more leaves on one side or over the top, right? Trees all, there's all kinds of different shapes and sizes of trees, right? So as long as it kind of looks like a tree, you're going to be all right. No stressing. Also, and I didn't mention this yet for some of you that might be joining me for the first time, you're not necessarily trying to recreate this exact version of this. You can, you know, most of the time what happens is people create a version that's similar, but it's unique. They have their own little touches on it. Purp on purpose, right? Some of you guys are making changes on purpose, but then others of you, because you're newer to painting, you're just going to create something a little different. And that's more of the goal for what I like to tell people. That should be more of your goal. You're going to create something similar, um, but, you know, not necessarily identical. So for now, that's all I'm going to do with my tree. Now, I already see. Um, I didn't leave enough space down in here on this branch. For, well, I did. I actually, you don't need to see the, the branch. But when I put my swing on here, I'm probably going to bring my swing out a little further. We'll see. Maybe a little bit wider. Um, but there's the, even between the two, right, you guys see there's a nice difference in, uh, in, the, in the paint or in the shape of that tree. So take a moment. You guys got about a minute to complete this step. And... Um, a sec here. All right. It's getting a weird message popping up on the screen there. Let's see. All right, Michelle, sounds good. Laws says, what is gauche? So gauche is a type of painting medium, kind of similar to watercolor, usually a little bit more, uh, more opaque, okay? But similar, similar to watercolor. I haven't used it too often. 
Um, but, but yeah, that's how I would describe gauche paint. Okay, again, it's a different, different medium, a little similar to, to water, pretty similar to watercolor. Okay. But all right. So what's next? Let's refine the sky a little bit. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take more of my blue paint. I actually need a little bit more. My dark blue paint, going to add some of that to the blue part in the sky to darken up some of that area in the middle. Okay, so just going to gra uh, grab my one-inch brush, clean it up a little bit because it's got it's mixed in with a little bit of other paint. So I want to remove all that so it doesn't mix in with our blue. Just going to scoop up that blue like this, going to come over nice and thick. Now, when I layer this over the top of what I have here, it's going to make this a little bit darker, right? This part in here is going to be darker. Now, I'm not going to take this and overlap it over all of that medium blue area. I'm going to take it. And I'm going to come really close to the edges. So I want a little bit of a, a variation between the colors that I've got in there. I want to be able to see them. So the center part of all this, this area down here towards the middle is where it's going to be darkest. So scooping up paint like this, nice and thick, I bring it over, short little choppy brush strokes. Now here it doesn't matter too much if I wrap it around my edge, I do have some of that blue uh, light blue from the very beginning, so coming around the edge on this side. So I'm going to leave it like that. Not necessary to bring that all the way over. All right. Now, if I wanted this even darker, I could come back and do a fourth layer over that, and that would make it even darker still. So as, as I'm layering that blue on top of itself, that same color blue here, if I keep layering it, layering it, it gets a little bit darker each time. Yeah, but that's good. That's a good color that I've got there. Next, same brush. I'm just going to clean it a little. This is the original. So this is the original dark blue that I started with that I mixed uh, the white with, Adriana. So, um, so remember, I'm not sure if you were here at the very beginning, but I had my, so my three colors on my plate, the red, uh, red, white, and blue I started with. This blue here is the same color as the original. I, it's not mixed in with anything. Okay. Just went back over and um, so I took that original blue and just layered it right in. It's the darkest part of, uh, of the blue part in that sky. Okay. So really quickly, just going to grab the same brush. I just cleaned it. I'm going to grab a little bit of my original red, a little bit, don't need a lot. Okay. And I'm going to come in here and just going to find little spots in my sky here, the red parts of the sky to kind of add some of this in here. And I'm just, Lightly dabbing this across my across my sky. Okay, just again finding little sections within my stripes where I can add some of this to create some depth within these cloud slash stripes. Okay, not all of it needs some. Again, just finding little spots here and there. You could also take a paper towel or your finger and smooth these out a bit. For example, so I could do this. I could take a paper towel and just lightly, if, I, if, I, if they're too intense or the edges are too rough, they're not in this case. I'm just showing you guys what you can do to blend the edges in a bit. Don't forget to send me pictures, folks, please. I can so I can share those with the followers of my <clears throat> social media. People like to see what everybody else creates. It's kind of fun to see everyone's ideas and um, different versions of this. So please send me pictures. For some reason, the last few sessions that I've done, I'm getting less and less pictures sent to me each time. And I don't know if I'm not mentioning it enough. I know the last uh, paint session that I did a few days ago, I didn't mention it till the very end, but and I got 
just a very few pictures. The one with the uh, the one with the cactus, the prickly pear cactus that we did. But if you guys are on here, please send me pictures of your of your paintings. Okay. Again, if you're on painting with Jesse on Facebook, just you can message me directly to this page. This uh, painting with Jesse page. Attach your picture there. If you're uh, on YouTube, <clears throat> send pictures over to my Gmail. What I do is I collect all those paintings and <clears throat> share them in one big batch. There we go. So later, so work on that for a little bit, but later, let me come across here. Don't mean to block the screen here um, or the camera, but we got a bunch of glitter on this piece. I'm not sure if... Uh, I know I didn't show it to you guys earlier, but I got some red glitter in the stripes. Okay. I've got some crystal here on the white part of the stripes. And then I've got some crystal here on the sky, on the clouds. I also have some blue glitter I may end up using. We'll see. More than likely I will. And then we've got to cover this up down here. Whoopsie. My, uh, just dip my... My little papers that I'm using to cover the image with into the black paint. All good. Same brush as the original one that I used, the uh, one-inch brush, Adriana. So the same brush that I used to create them in the beginning. Okay. So the uh, the big one-inch brush, this guy right here. Okay. Uh, let's see. I added my cactus in the comments on your post. I saw that, Tina. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. You can also add your paintings to the... When I do the big batch post where I show all the all of your paintings, if... You haven't sent it to me you can always add it there no big deal right um but even that i noticed a lot of people didn't send me there didn't add them there either so and i know everybody's busy right i get it no big deal but for those of you that can send those over it's greatly appreciated <clears throat> okay everybody so what is next um we're gonna let this dry a bit we're actually going to move down here into the reflection area of the water. Now, all I did to create the, the, uh, the water down here to make it look like there's water is I added a bunch of those lines, those little reflections in there uh, using one of my small brushes. So, okay, this little zero, number zero brush, okay, you could use that or a uh, a little uh, number zero round brush you could use anything small and pointy like this will work okay so what i started with so what i'm talking about is all these lines in the water i've got some light blue lines in there i've got some white ones in there i've got i think i added some yellow ones in there as well but i'm going to take a little bit of my white paint okay don't need a lot i'm going to grab this i'm going to find one of my mixed plates here find a little spot okay I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of the blue, just a touch, and mix the two together. Let me see, I'm gonna need more white. So white and blue, making a really light blue. That's what I'm gonna start those reflections with. Then I'm gonna take my brush, I dip it into my water. Bring the water, bring the water over. I'll do that two or three times. So I'm mixing water into this paint. Again, making it thinner, making it more flowy. It just flows better like this. Also, it, it, I'm able to make smaller, skinnier lines. Now, what I do then next is I take my brush and I spin it inside of that water, inside of that mixture. It makes the point smaller and point and skinnier, pointier. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is down here in the reflections in the water, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to start taking my brush, running it across, making little tiny lines. Let me let me bring this closer to the screen. I know these are really small. So what I'm doing is this. And again, I'm starting off with a really light blue, but I'm going to go ahead and introduce other colors in here in just a little bit. Maybe some white ones, some um, orange and yellow ones a little bit to reflect some of those clouds in the background. It's a little hard to do this while I'm holding the canvas in my hand. Okay. So just coming across.
I'm just doing that a whole bunch. So I'm getting, I'm, again, I'm creating little reflections in that water. So I'll start with this color. I make little short ones. Some of them are a little longer. Some of them curve a little tiny bit. So I'll, I'll make almost like little S's within, within the water. I'll do this. So they're not all just um, horizontal. They can kind of, they, they come out a little bit, they turn a little bit, go back the other way. But the idea is to make a whole bunch of these in the water. Some longer, some shorter. Colored pencil, Nancy, perfect. That works. Colored pencil is nice to work with. Using a little, you know, different little uh, medium than acrylic paint. Every medium has its advantages and disadvantages. Colored pencil is really nice. So a little skinny brush again. <clears throat> I, I'm using my my number zero round brush, and I'm using just the very very tip of my bristles of the bristles on the brush at the moment. All right. So creating something like this. Okay, these little tiny short, some long squiggly lines within that water. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take, now I'm going to take, uh, let's see, let's see. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of black, just a touch. When I want to create, I want to create some more grayish lines in that water. Just want to vary the reflections in there a bit. Got all these different colors in the sky, and by varying these colors a bit, you create a bit of a maybe make it a little more realistic. And you could also do it with some blue, just light blue, or more more of a lighter blue, more of a bluish light blue. The idea is to have a variety in that water, variety of colors. I could even take, I think I've already mentioned this, but I could take a little bit of yellow or orange. Okay, just a little bit of, of yellow in this case. And just drop a few yellow lines or yellow reflections in that water. A little bit. So here's kind of what that looks like. Okay. Doesn't take a lot. Just be a little strategic with your lines. Now, on my original, I have a little bit more of that. There's a little bit more water showing. Uh, it's a little higher. The water level is a little bit higher. Uh, so my lines aren't as condensed. They're a little more spread apart. Either one works. You get a, They're almost, they're really similar, but here my line's a little bit more condensed. They're, they're a little bit more spread apart. This creates a little bit more movement in the water. That's more of a, a little bit more of a maybe still lake or um, really calm 
river, right? This has more flow in it. This has less flow in it. Either one works just fine. River, lake, beach, whatever the heck you want it to be, okay? So work on that for just a bit. What else, guys? Who has any questions for me? If, is anything, if anything up here that I've done isn't clear, uh, let me know and I'll, I can repeat it. I know not everything always comes through. I may think I'm explaining something really easily or nicely and everybody gets it, uh, but I know that that's not always the case. So if any of you have any questions, please put them in the comment section and I'll be more than glad to answer. We have a pretty small group today. It makes it easier for me to catch all your questions. So... Um, so yeah, Adriana says, can you repeat the colors for the water? Absolutely. So what I did, um, is I just made a mixture. I started with a mixture of a really light, light blue. Okay. That's okay, Adriana. No worries. I created a mixture of a really light blue and I started with that. It's almost against the black of the uh, paint in the background. It looks almost white. Okay. And you can use white as well in some areas, right? You can use, uh, as long as you're using a variety of uh, colors in that water, just different shades of the combination of white and blue, you're going to be okay. You could also throw in some light yellow ones, a few little light, light yellow ones, because there is some orange and yellow in that sky, and maybe you can reflect some of that in that water. Um, so white, light blue, a little bit of a darker light blue against a variety some yellows, and you could even throw in some oranges, some orange colors, okay? The majority of the colors in the reflection are a light, light blue, and maybe a little bit of a darker light blue. So just play with it a little bit, and um, as long as you've got a variety in there, you'll be okay, okay? You got it, Donna? Absolutely. Yep. No worries, guys. Again, uh, if you guys have any questions, please ask them. Um, you're not you know, you're not harming anything by asking your questions. Oftentimes other people also have that question, but they're a little shy in asking, or maybe they think I'm going to go, what the heck? You didn't hear me the first time or something. This is about you guys learning. I love teaching this. And, um, you know, the more questions you guys have, it also lets me know, you know, if I need to clarify something. All right. Uh, last thing I want to do is have you guys not get something. And then, you know, you, don't have a nice experience because you didn't understand something. Please ask it, okay? Ask your questions. Let me know if something's not clear. I'm more than happy to clarify, all right? So again, maybe another minute on that water and then we're moving on to the next step. And also the other thing is this, you can always come back and refine your painting later. So if you see me move on to another step and you wanna, you know, you're like, I don't wanna fall any further behind, you can move with me and then just go back and um, in most cases, you can always go back and finish up whatever you were on that you didn't get a chance to finish. Uh, so so there, there's also that, okay? I don't want you guys stressing about trying to keep up. I know sometimes my pace doesn't suit everyone. Everyone paints at a different pace, and that's kind of the beauty of painting. There's different approaches. Some people like a really nice slow pace. Some people like a really fast pace. Um, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I actually go for more of a slower pace, uh, but everybody has a different speed with which to paint at. And so, you know, you, I understand that. Okay. Let's look at our cloud here. So what we're going to do is we're going to assess our cloud, <clears throat> the orange cloud, and see if we need to do any touches to it, make any touches to it before we add in the sun. So I think maybe on mine a little tiny bit, maybe down in the orange area here, the deeper orange, I want it to be a little bit darker, just a bit. So taking one of my small flat brushes. Ah, uh, thank you, Tina. I really, really do appreciate it. I love the feedback. I really, really do uh, appreciate the feedback. Because as an instructor, you don't always know what's, you know, what's, um, what it is that you guys are getting from it, from the tutorials, right? We're not, it's not always clear. I try to explain everything as best as I can, but unless I hear from you guys, you know, I won't know. So I do appreciate, I do appreciate it. 
So Adriana, so that probably sounds like your edges. Maybe you need to work on those edges a bit. Also, you want to make sure that it's kind of transparent. So what makes this looks look like a cloud as opposed to a mountain are two things. Your edges, you want those edges to be nice and you don't want them smooth like your edges on your mountain. Okay. You want them a little bit rough, rougher, a little bit more. Uh, some of them are going to be a little sharper. Uh, and you create that with your, you know, one of your small brushes. But the other thing is you want it to be a little bit transparent and, and you want there to be a variation throughout. So some of it is going to be a little bit more transparent. Others, other parts of it are going to be a little more solid, but those are the two things that are going to make it look like a cloud, the rough edges. Um, and then tr the transparent nature of your cloud. Okay. So that's, that's where you want to, that's where you would want to uh, uh, focus. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange, just a little bit. Don't need a lot. Okay, so I'm going to scoop it right out of my jar because I don't have a lot of this orange left and I don't want to waste any of it. So using one of my small brushes, I'm just going to come in here right where I'm going to put my sun in, the little sun. I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to come in here and create a little area that's just a, a, a little bit more intense in that orange color. I want a nice little backdrop for my sun. And again, Adriana, this even all of this in here, I make it nice and rough. I don't want smooth, smooth edges to my cloud. Otherwise, that's exactly what will, what will happen. It'll start to look a little bit more like a cloud. Okay, and so I'm using a little swirly kind of a rotations with my brush, but especially around the edges, I want to make sure that it's nice and rough. All right, there we go. I think that's pretty good there. And then it's funny because sometimes when I'm instructing some of these, sometimes I don't feel like I'm on a good flow right there. You can always feel it. You can always feel, I can always feel when, when I'm on a good flow and I'm, explaining things nicely. And then other times I can feel it. It's like my brain's a little foggier that day or whatever. So, um, but anyway, the feedback is definitely appreciated. This one here, I'm, I'm somewhere at about maybe, uh, I'm on a good, I'm on a, on a decent flow on this one. That's what it feels like. But that's why I like, I like to get your questions in here. So I know what I need to make sure you know you, that I explain. But okay, there's a good little backdrop for my son. And what I'm going to do next, remember, especially when you're working with a lighter color, in this case, we're going to be working with some yellow. Uh, the lighter the color, the more transparent the nature of the paint is. And so usually we have to do some layering. So using one of my small brushes, I'm just going to come over and I'm going to touch where I want the center of my sun to be. So a little tiny dot. Now I'm not going to create the rest of the sun with this brush. I'm just using this to put in a nice little dot where I want that sun to be located. That's about where the center of that sun is going to be. The next step is I'm going to grab my number three brush. Okay, my little number three round brush. Scoop up some more yellow and I'm slowly going to build up on that sun with a nice circular pattern. So all the way around my sun, I'm slowly making it larger. And I'm also able to keep it round this way by making the nice little circles, right? A little swirly action as I go, slowly making it larger. The reason why I don't start with the outer edge first is because it's really easy to make too large of a sun. And that's always harder to fix because we have to remove paint if we want to make a sun a circle or any object smaller. So slowly you build on it. Always take a little step back or lean away from your painting. Look at it from a little bit of a distance. Now, again, the paint in this case is transparent. I'm not worried about that right now. I will come back and do another layer over the top of that. What I'm worried about right now is the size and the overall round roundness of that circle. 
So I slowly work on that. Once it's nice and dry, I'll come back and add another layer over the top of that, okay? And then there, if you wanted to, you could come right down here where you can see some of that blue reflecting, some of the mountain reflecting in your water. You could, if there's enough space in there, add a little bit of a reflection for your sun, if that area is large enough. Or maybe even just a little bit of a light, um, like a little bit of a yellow reflecting in the water right in there somewhere, okay? Since I'm working with this yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the one, the flat brush. You guys keep working on your sun there. Okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the little flat brush that I used to refine my cloud. I'm just gonna take some of this and I'm gonna add just yellow, some yellow reflections or yellow light beaming through some of these clouds. I'm just spreading this. Not too thick. All right. There we go. <clears throat> so there's a difference between this sun and this one. And the, the obvious thing is that that's really nice and bright. But again, once we're done with it, once this is dried, we're going to come around and work on some of the stuff up here. Once this is dried, that second layer, sometimes even a third layer is what's required to make that really stand out. Okay. So take about another minute and then we're moving on and uh, we're going to add that next layer of paint to the tree. When we're done with that, we're going to move in up here and add the clouds for the stars in the sky. And then we're going to tackle the swing down in there. The fun part. All right, everyone. So I'm going to take, see, I need a little bit more black, <clears throat> a little tiny bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of black to my palette here, my main palette. I'm going to go back to, let me, let me see here. Okay, my little number four flat. Now, earlier to create the tree, we used a really dark gray. So this is a dark gray base. That dark gray combined with the background, the light background, especially where the white is or the lighter part in the sky is, makes so that this layer is a little bit transparent. Okay, it makes it lighter, washed out a little bit. This next layer, I'm only going to use black. Okay, and I'm not mixing any water with this. Again, one of my little flat brushes. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to use this next layer. I'm not going to cover every single part of that tree. I'm just going to come in here and going to move some paint around. It's a little thick. This new black, this new darker layer, along with the fact that I'm layering it on a little thick, creates density, uh, uh, a, little, a, little bit of, a little bit of a 3D effect. Okay, again, I want to leave some of those lighter areas coming through. 
light shining through between the leaves, so I avoid those a little bit. But I also want to leave some of that original gray layer peeking through here and there because that's what creates that dimension. Little subtle 3D effect. Nothing too obvious, but your eyes will pick up on it. Now around my edges, what do I do? Same thing as I did earlier. Turn my brush using the different edges. I'm gonna use this to also come out a little further wherever I want to add or refine the shape on the tree. Remember, you could also do this with your cotton swabs. Either way is fine, whatever you're more comfortable with. I think the using the brush gives you a little bit more control. Using the cotton swabs, for some people it's easier. But again, and let me give you guys a close up. Look, I don't know if you can pick up the difference. So some areas I still got some of the original gray coming through, like right in here, and some of those little areas where there are where there, where there is no paint other than the background. Okay, this new layer with just the black paint is creating that 3D effect. So I'm turning the brush. Even here, I turn the brush a little bit as I go. Yeah, send it over, Adriana. I'll see if I can, if I have a chance, I'll look, but yeah, send it over. And we work our way all the way around. Again, leaving some of that original gray layer in some areas and then in other areas we cover it up but also making sure that we're leaving some of those, some of that sky coming through in between some of those leaves. It gives our tree, our silhouette, a little bit of realism. All right, there we go. So take a little bit on, on that. Let me give you guys another close up. Now, as this dries, it's gonna, the paint won't be as quite as glossy, but there will still be a bit of a difference between the two different layers, okay? But uh, it'll also settle a little bit, it won't be quite as thick. Take a little, let's take a little step back, look at our tree from a distance, maybe, um, you know, take a moment to, to touch up and refine. I think I have too many areas where light's coming through, so just gonna minimize those just, just a little bit. Personal choice. Okay, there we go. Now I'm lacking my tree. All right.
All right, Adriana, so I've got your picture right here. Um, no, that doesn't look like a cloud to me. It's quite transparent. It looks it looks like uh, you just have a more, more of a dispersed cloud, but it's fine. That'll work. You could put a little sun right in the middle of that, and it'll it'll be just fine. It does. I'm not sure. You know, um, it doesn't look solid like a mountain. It looks more like mist, maybe like mist, more of a more of a thinner cloud. It's not as dense as this, but it, it'll still work. If you put in a sun right down the middle, you'll you'll be fine. <clears throat> Let's see. Cheryl says, "What would you suggest I put on the other half of my canvas? I divided mine into two halves." Do you mean you have like down the middle like this vertically or do you have half and half where you're divided horizontally? Because that, that, that would be interesting either way. <laughs> but all right. So while all of this is drying, the very last thing as I mentioned, uh, unless you're planning on doing glitter with me, uh, the very last thing we're going to be doing, it's coming up here pretty soon, that swing, okay? Um, but for now, let's come up here and work on these clouds. Let's see, down the middle, on one side, what would you put on one side? Um, hey, Cheryl, can you send me a picture here on Facebook? Take a picture of it and shoot it over to me right now on Messenger, and I'll look at it. Just to, you know, just to get a better idea, and I can get a visual, and maybe I'll, I'll come up with, a, with an idea. But um, because, again, because we have a, a nice small group today, I can take a moment. If you guys send me a picture of what you've got, if you guys have any questions, I can, I can give you tips and stuff. But Adriana, so the other thing, oh, back to your picture that you sent me. If you wanted, uh, what, what, again, yours does look like there's a cloud in the background. When I see that, I see a more of a dispersed cloud. Uh, but all you're really, what's happening is you're not, you kind of did more of a longer brush strokes on yours. It looks like you did long brush strokes like this, uh, feathering out your, your cloud. You want to do these short circular ones to create uh, that, that kind of a, uh, a little bit of density, not too much. You still want transparency within that paint, but, but short little brush strokes, especially towards the edges where you want them nice and choppy and even turn your brush as you, as you kind of do this, as you're going around it, okay? But again, it looks to me like you did these long brush strokes to create more of a longer brush strokes, okay? Is that, is that what you're saying that you did or, or it was the long ones, is that right? Say yes, Jesse, I did the long ones or, or I did what you, or I did the little short circular ones. You just need more of these short circular ones, especially around your edges, okay? <laughs> it's all good, Adriana. You always do. You always do really well on your paintings. So you know, you know that part of the part of it is sometimes you get that little bit of a struggle, and then you slowly work it in. So you'll get it. <clears throat> okay, long strokes. Okay, yeah. Remember, folks. One of the things you want to do when I'm when I'm showing you guys a step, try to mimic what I'm doing. There are different ways to approach. You know whether it's clouds or a tree or whatever, there are different approaches. You don't have to, you can create it in a different manner than what I'm showing you. But, um, you know, if you use the same or a similar one to what I'm doing, you'll create a similar effect. So, so in this case, again, when you're creating that cloud, you're kind of doing these little short brush strokes, swirling them, swirling them, swirling them. And if you want, you typically want a cloud to get a little bit thinner as it gets out towards the edges. So you would have less paint as you come over to the edges, okay? And then you can come in. You can always come back in and layer more paint towards the inside of it, kind of like what I did here. This is almost more like two clouds. You got the cloud in the front, and then you got the lighter cloud in the back, okay? But uh, but yeah. So you know, be observant, be a little observant, <clears throat> and then try to mimic. Probably some of the best advice I can give you when I was learning to paint. Uh, you know, sometimes I'd come across somebody who was painting. And I would watch them and right away, oh, I can do that. Just, but being a good mimic will, will, uh, will go take you a long way. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some clouds to our sky. So let's get one of our small brushes and then some white paint ready to go.
Okay, so back to my little flat brush, my small, flat, the, the same little sl uh, flat brush seems to be using, getting a lot of use today. This little guy, okay, little number four flat brush. I'm going to grab some white. Let me see, where's my palette here? I need, oh, I got plenty right here. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white, okay? Let's see, whoop, mixed in with some red. Let's scratch that idea, grab some more. Some clean white, give me a second. Okay, so a little bit of white. Now I scoop it up kind of thick. Each of these little stars has more of the white paint in the center or it's lighter the center. So what I'll do, now this is a little bit random. I didn't go and count how many stars I wanted on my painting. Obviously, you know, there's not enough stars on there, but uh, for a realistic, uh, 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 a uh, realistic flag, but that's not what we're going for. I mean, you could sit there and count out all your all your uh, stars, but in this case, let me see, I got one, two, I was able to fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, looks like about 13 flags. Ooh, the original 13 count, uh, colonies, that's by accident. I didn't do any of that on purpose. Um, so starting with the center, a little center of my cloud, and then on the edges, I just kind of spread it out a little bit. Okay, kind of like that. There's one. I'll just find another little spot and they're not all the same size. They can all be different sizes, right? There we go, there's another one. <clears throat> Take your time with this. Always, what do I say when we're when we're creating something, um, freehanding something, draw, whether, actually, even when we're, when we're drawing to, make it smaller first. If you're gonna make a mistake, make a mistake on the smaller side because that's easier to fix. You can always add a little bit more to make it larger. So just take your time. They almost, these almost look like we're making little flying saucers. We got a round center and then we got these little edges that come out. I'll give you guys a close up in just a moment. Okay. Okay, look at those there. Okay, we'll, we'll do another one maybe right here. So we'll start with kind of a, a you know, around your center, and then on the edges, we just come out a little bit, okay? Now here, on my edges, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't want that big of a contrast between this and this. I'll likely change this a little bit in a little while, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it looks a little, a little bit more like the original, but for now, let's keep working on those clouds. So again, a little center. Now I'm using the edge, the very corner of my brush in this case. So right there, okay, I'm pressing that up against the canvas like this, a little corner, and then I, okay. All right, here we go. Next one. All right, over here. Again, fit as many of these little clouds as you'd like. Now what I'm gonna do really quickly, is I'm just gonna grab some of this white, I'm gonna bring it over to my mix plate, find a little spot over here, and I'm gonna take a little touch of blue and I'm just gonna mix those two together. Swirly blue, swirly light blue. Now I'm just gonna come over here, whoops, and uh, here on my edges, I'm just gonna bring some of this in here, not making clouds, not making any more of these little clouds, I'm just gonna take this, I, I'm just, my edges in between my colors are a little too sharp. I want to blend those out a little bit. You don't have to do this step. Okay, if your cloud, if your if your uh, blue area up there is looking just fine, don't worry about this. 
I'm just going to take a moment to uh, blend this a little bit more. So make your stars. What I did here is I just mixed a little bit of blue and white. And just going through here. It's almost like I've introduced a fourth color in here. So I have the original light blue layer. Okay, and then remember we did an in-between color. Actually, we put a layer of this over the top of that. Blend it in a little bit. Then I introduce this dark blue color. Then the white. What is that? One, two, three. White for the stars. And now I'm adding this kind of an in-between blue color to blend out my edges a bit. Again, don't worry too much about this. If your sky looks good, if your blue area up here is fine, then I'm, I might just be confusing you guys a little bit. Don't worry about this too much. I just wanted a little bit more of a, wanted it to look a little bit more like my original. But of course, as you're working at your, working on your little stars, take a look around. Always pull back a little bit from your painting. Look at it from a distance and go, hey, where do I need another star? Am I missing a little star in that corner? Do I need one here? You know, but always take a little step back and look at your work from a distance. It just gives you a, a better perspective. Allows you to take it all in. Oh, okay. I'll take a look, Cheryl. All right. Give me just a sec. As soon as I'm done here, you guys get a little time on this step, and I'll take a look at your painting, Cheryl. All right. I'm digging this a little more now. There's a little bit of a randomness involved, a little bit of experimentation that a lot of painting, a lot of times that you, when we paint, we have to go through a little bit of a experimentation. Okay, even I've been painting for quite a few years now and I still sometimes I'll look at something and I'll go, oh, you know what? I think that'll look better if I do this or I do that. And then I, I have a pretty good idea as to what I want, but there's a little bit of an experimentation, the process that's going as I'm working through there Sometimes what I'm going for isn't quite coming coming along the way I want, right? I'm, I'm working it. I'm like, mm, not quite, not quite. And then I'll, but I'll get it. But by, by experimenting, maybe I'll add a little bit more of one color. Uh, maybe I'll make the paint a little thicker or I'll, I'll add a little bit of water. But as I'm going, I start to refine the process that I'm looking for. Okay, so you don't always have to have all of the answers uh, sometimes you develop them on the fly as you go. Okay. But all right, Cheryl, let me take a look at your painting really quickly here. Let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't think I got all of your right edge, but yeah, I see. I see what you can, what you got there. So, hmm, 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 hmm. are you looking for a completely different uh, image on that side because you could always simply continue everything that's on the right and bring it over and just create more of a landscape. You'll just have a larger landscape of this, a continuation of all this. So bring your hill over, um, you know, maybe your cloud and your stars and everything move over a little bit more. Maybe over on this side, you have a farm. Ooh, that would be kind of cool. A little farm, a little barn, a little barn with a little picket fence. That might be really nice. Um, so on your left-hand side, a little a silhouette of a barn across from the tree. Okay, that's what I that's what I would 
put on something like that. But you continue all of this into, it. so you extend all of this on this side over, right? Your stripes. This comes over a little bit into the into that side of your painting also. Um, and then just continue with those red stripes across. Maybe, of course, you got your sunset on the right-hand side. But over here, the hill maybe comes over and flattens out a little bit. And then you got a nice silhouette of a barn right there with a, a windmill, a little picket fence, I don't know, something like that. That's what I envision on yours. Um, but you can get really creative and you know change things up quite a bit. Oh, the fireworks. There you go. You could do little fireworks over too. Maybe a barn. <laughs> There's a barn, a silhouette of a barn with uh, fireworks in the background. Uh, but again, you know, I would extend everything over if you want those those sides to match, or maybe it's just completely different and you have fireworks on that side of your painting. Anything like that would would be fine. But uh, let me know what you decide on. I'd, I'd like to if you have your own idea or you know you you have a, a something else planned. Let me know. But I like it. Oh yeah, some cacti on that side. There you go, Adriana. Okay. All right. So let's take a real quick look. What do we have? <clears throat> Everything's already in our painting other than our little swing and the glitter. So what are we going to do? Well, let me talk about the swing for a moment before we actually jump into it. Now, the hardest part on that swing is the ropes. Did I call them strings earlier? I might have called them strings the ropes, right? Those really skinny lines for the ropes. One way around that is to make your swing a little bit larger. Okay, make your make your swing a little larger so that way you can also you can get away with making slightly larger ropes. Okay? But sometimes if you're working with one of these little flat brushes, you could by pressing your brush into the plate, so by doing this you create a nice skinny edge with which you can make those skinny lines with okay so that would be my recommendation a little bit of water in your paint so i got some black paint here on my plate just add, bring some over to the side adding a little bit a little bit of water here what you can do is once you've got that water mixed into your paint experiment on a piece of paper on a paper plate on cardboard, et cetera, et cetera, before you actually go to make your the ropes on your painting. So for example, with the skinny brush or flat brush, I press down on the plate to squeeze those bristles together. Now when I, I can come over and I can kind of do this. Okay. The, the less pressure I have on there, the skinnier the lines become. So I'm just practicing my skinny lines there right on my plate. Right? So if you don't have one of these smaller brushes, let's see, do I have an even smaller one still? Yes, I do. If you don't have one of these flat, small flat brushes that you can uh, squeeze those bristles together, then you're gonna wanna use, if you've got one, a round brush, a uh, pointy, they're called round brushes, but they're really pointy, small brushes. Here's another small brush that I've got that I can use to experiment with. Okay, this is like a number three flat. But I could come in here. I'm not gonna do my ropes yet, but that's what I would use. My flat brush or I would use my zero round, little pointy thing to make those lines. Okay, and once I'll decide which one I'm gonna use. Maybe I'll do one of each, but you want to practice those lines first on a scratch piece of paper. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my round brush and I'm gonna create the seat, the, the, the base of my swing, right? My, my little platform, the seat. I'm gonna take a little bit of water, right? We got some water in my black paint over here. I'm just making some more over here on the right. Where do I want my swing? My swing's gonna be over here somewhere right in here. I just want to make sure that I bring it down close enough to the to the ground and then 
then I know where my ropes are going to attach to the to the tree. Okay, so the longer the longer the lower the seat, the longer those ropes have to be, right? So maybe be strategic. Don't bring it up too close, but don't don't go down too far close to the ground because that the longer the run, the more likely that you're going to the more you're going to struggle with those lines. So find your spot. Mine's going to be about right here. Going to make a nice little rectangle. Okay, little rectangle. And then we're going to paint the inside. Okay. Sorry if I'm sticking my head in the way of the camera. I'm just fixing the bottom edge. All right. Now, if I use my skinny round brush, again, you still want to practice, right? You want to make sure there's plenty of water in your paint. You just don't want so much in there that it's runny. And then practice a bit. You go, okay. So if I was going to use this, now I'm gonna turn my the, the canvas towards me, the easel towards me, so it's easier for me to see what's happening here. I could, now another thing, another thing that you can do is you can use a chalk, a piece of chalk to draw your lines in and then use those as your guide once you get them nice and straight. So something like a, you know, this is too thick, but you could draw your lines with your chalk Use those as your guides. Once you have them nice and straight, you just go right over those. But I'm going to do this. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do this with uh, my little tiny brush, my number zero. So let's see where that rope would be right about right here. It goes about right there. That's where it would come out of the tree. From there, here we go. We hold our breath a little bit. I put my finger here up against the canvas, and I'm going to go... I'm going to run this down, okay? All right, here we go. Pressure's on. Okay, now watch. I missed my swing a little bit, okay? But my line is, is pretty straight. I could bring my swing out a little bit. Okay, to correct for that. Okay. There are ways to fix it. The other, the other option would be to erase that line, that paint line, which you can do. You can remove it, especially when it's wet, and go again. I would avoid trying to erase because we might also remove some of the background paint. But here we go. Here's the next one. Um, should I try... Yeah, I'm going to try with the flat brush now. I'm going to do the flat brush to show you guys, you know, that this also would work. The only thing is that um, the thicknesses might be a little different, but that's okay. So my little flat brush, I press down against the plate on both sides of the brush. I turn it, turn it, squeezing those bristles together, and then here we go. So again, I just kind of eyeball it. That line's going to go about right there, that rope. And then from right there, Pinky up against the canvas. Whoops. Okay, a little crooked. Okay, that's okay. I am going to go and erase that. It's a little crooked down here, so maybe I'm just going to erase it up to there. Paper towel, a little bit of water, and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to dab this. Because this is really fresh paint, it's easy to remove at this moment. And I'm not super concerned about removing that background color, the background, background paint, because I can easily match it with some white and some yellow. But I still want to be careful because that's extra work, right? So just dabbing in here. OK. 
Okay. All right, here we go again. Turn towards me. Actually, I'm gonna erase a little bit more of that paint. I'm saying erase, right? But I mean remove. There we go. And here we go again. So even as a as somebody who's been painting a while, these can be a little, I can struggle a little bit with these. I'm actually just going to go up and erase, erase a little bit higher up. But that's okay. You don't let that stop you. You, you go again. Here we go. Okay, and again, I missed my swing a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, and then these two lines, these lines aren't quite as straight as the ones I got here, but that's okay. If I really want to, I'll go through there and clean that up again and go all over and, and do it again, okay? And go again, <clears throat> but there are my lines, okay? You can always, Oops, where'd my little brush go? There it is. You can always refine, okay? You can always um, clean things up a little bit and refine until you get what you get it how you want. So what I would recommend on this step is taking a piece of chalk, putting your lines in, and then once you have them nice and straight, you just go right over them. Jesse, should you, I mean, just, just. <laughs> let's see. No, Adriana. Um, oh, let me see. So who else sent me a painting? Ad Audrey. Let me take a look, Audrey. I was going to say, Adriana, don't, uh, don't trash it. <laughs> Let's see. You want to age it a little bit. So I like what you have, Audrey. I think it, I think it's not, I think it's actually, you're almost there. Um, where you would want to refine is the bottom where the reflection in the water kind of takes place. Just have a more defined edge where the water is. If you're, you know, uh, yeah, so you want to have a nice, defined, pretty straight water edge, and then your reflections in the water. Just kind of uh, um, make sure you emphasize those. Also, that the black part, the silhouette part in the front, maybe add a little bit more, more of that, uh, make it a little bit, a little bit darker. I see what you're trying to do there, aging it a bit, um, but I think that gets lost a little bit too much in that. So just make it a little bit darker, and then. Um, with your cloud, define it a little bit more and then put that sun nice and defined in the center of that. Even though you're trying to uh, age it a bit, and especially in your sky, that looks really nice. I think that looks really nice in that sky, but where you're losing the definition is in the bottom. And so just want to define that a little bit more. Okay. Let's see. Loretta. All right, Loretta. Oh, you're done. It <laughs> looks like you're done over there. Awesome, Loretta. Okay. Now, Adriana, you were asking, should you uh, uh, scrap yours? No, not at all. I mean, your cloud, because of your cloud, or I'm not sure, I think your painting looks fine. You just, again, put in just, you can work with what you've got and it'll be just fine. But if you want to define your cloud a little bit more, then, then that's what you would do. Okay. So again, looking at my swing, if I wanted to fix my swing, I could make uh, make the base a little bit bigger, okay? Um, 
there's different ways. Whenever you have something on a painting that you're not quite sure about, you're going, oh, I don't like that. Like in this case, my ropes, not quite straight enough, but they're pretty straight and I could leave it like that. It's not bad. I could also look at it and go, how can I fix this? Where do I have the biggest issue with uh, the rope not being straight? Now that, that would be right up in here close to my swing so that I could make my swing a little bit larger and I can cover some of that up. There are different ways to make corrections. Again, without having to go through and through there and erase it again, um, which I could do. Another option would be to simply make my swing, the base of the swing, a little bit larger. And I cover up some of that area down near the, of the rope near uh, the bottom where it connects. There we go. I like that better. I like that. Now, if this wasn't a silhouette, if this wasn't in silhouette, actually, you could probably do it still. I would add little, I could also add little flowers to the ropes, little tiny flowers to make, to, to um, clean up some of that slight curvature. Oh, I see. I see. No, Adrian, it's not that bad, Audrey. So, so Audrey, what you could do is, is, um, is work on that bottom area because your sky, I think your sky looks excellent. You definitely made it look uh, aged or antique-ish kind of, but towards the bottom, just define those areas a little bit more and you'll be okay. okay you just have to find a way. You got to make your water, uh, your horizon for your water line defined. Make sure you have those reflections in the water so it looks like water. Okay. You could also bring that up a little higher if you want. It's up to you. But your sun, make sure your sun is really defined in your sky. Um, and that cloud, just, just clean it up a little bit uh, and you'll, you'll be okay. All right. But okay. Um, glitter time. We are at glitter. Okay. What, um, let me see here really quickly. So I've got, actually, I've only got two glitters because I, I'm out of my galaxy glitter. We'll see my, uh, my clear glitter. So I've got some red, I've got some blue. Okay. We're going to start with those. For those of you that are not familiar with glitter, I like to use this folk art called glitterific okay and i'm just going to take one of my brushes now i got to clean it up before i dip it into my yeah the orange skies a little are a little tricky nancy just a lot of practice adriana says do we have time to add a little person on the swing uh, we could, we could, we're running out of time here and it might push us over. So, um, but that would be pretty cool. A little profile of somebody sitting on a swing. Um, that'd be kind of cool. Just don't know that we're going to have time for that. Maybe, maybe another day, Adriana, another day. So I'm just going to stick. I said, I didn't have any, Oh, I don't, I do not have any. <clears throat> so I'm out of my crystal glitter. I'm going to start with my red, take a clean brush. Dip it right in there. And all this is, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, it's glitter floating around in glue. I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to put a, some of this glitter right over my red stripes. A little bit goes a long way. I don't have to, um, I don't have to saturate it. If you guys... If any of you are doing any fireworks in your painting, um, this glitter would be really cool over those. And these glitter, this glitter comes in different colors, right? You can get it in red, blue, there's greens, gold, silver. Oh, and then when you work with the glitter, you want to add it only to the areas that are already dry. So again, straight lines are tricky if you, you know, you haven't gotten that yet. So ideally, most people would probably take a pencil or a chalk, a piece of chalk, and you can freehand those nice and, until you get the, get the lines nice and straight. Then you would take your paintbrush 
and draw right over it. Now, in the original, I did it all freehand. Some days you're a little more, you know, your hands are a little more stable than others. So those I did freehand, and they came out pretty straight. And then these, I would just sit there and, if I'm not using any chalk or pencil to put my lines in first and then paint over them, I just work them until I get them straight. I erase until I get them straight. Okay, but also you can warm up a little, bit, little bit. Practice on a, on a scratch piece of paper. Practice a few times and, uh, you know, warm up your, your finger muscles. All right. There's my red. Let me show you guys a little, give you guys a little close-up of that. Look at that. Look at that. Very cool. Let's see. Cheryl says, what's the easiest way to make fireworks, uh, to paint fireworks? So you want to start kind of like if you're painting um, a spider. You start first with a little point in the center, like a little dot in the center. And then from there, put little spider legs coming out of it, curved little lines. Okay? You can do seven, eight, nine lines of, of, of that. But in the color, whatever color your firework is, right? So red, blue, yellow. And then if you have glitter, so you'll do that. A bunch of lines coming out of the center. So here's your little dot and then a bunch of lines coming off of it. I'll show you on a piece of paper here in a little bit. But then you, um, you know, you draw your little line. If you if you have the little line coming down to, towards the ground where the rocket shot out from. But glitter, and again, I'm using some blue here, blue glitter. Glitter goes a long way. If you've got some of that, you can use that to make your fireworks really stand out. All right. And then don't forget, folks, once again, just want to remind you guys, don't forget to send me pictures of your stuff. Don't be shy. <laughs> I'm kidding. If, you, if you're inclined to share, please send me pictures so that way when I do that, or, or you can wait till I post, you know, the painting, the pictures that I get to post yours. Um, but the more I have to post on that original post that I make around the painting, the more fun it is. But definitely, if you miss, if you don't send it to me on time and you see my post, please share your painting in the comments to that. Usually it takes me about a day sometimes to, to make the post about it. And, and then other times if I don't get enough pictures, what I'll do is I'll wait till the next painting session, till I get pictures for the next painting session, then I combine them in one big, one big batch or a bigger batch. But all right, there's my blue glitter in this in the sky. Now I didn't put blue glitter on the original, but look at that. <clears throat> Excuse me, look at that blue sky up there. Pretty cool. Okay. Now I don't have any more of the clear glitter to use on my white clouds or the white stripes. But that would be pretty cool. Okay. So get creative, folks. Have fun with this. That was the last little step. On the piece, the very last thing that I would do is I would sign it <clears throat> somewhere towards the corner on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to take, um, what color should I take? Why not? A little bit of red. I like to sign with my last name. So over here in the, the bottom somewhere. <clears throat> Now I'm using, I'm using some red. You can sign wherever you want. Okay. And then <clears throat> I didn't do the bottom edge in black, but I would do that now. I would flip it over, take some black, just so that 
I'm consistent. Whoops. So I have, I currently have two more events on the calendar. I hope to add a couple of more events this week. Whoops, just accidentally covered up some of my water, some of my reflections in the water. That's all right, I can fix that. So be on the lookout for those events. <clears throat> I'll be adding them sometime over the next couple of days. Okay. But all right, everybody, hopefully you all had a good time. Um, you know, oh, the fireworks. Let me show you really quick. Oh, oh, before we go anywhere. So here's how I would do fireworks. An easy way. Take a small brush. Okay, let's see. Let me get a color here that's going to stand out against the white background. So in this case, I'm using a little bit of blue and some water. Again, skinny brush is important. So let's say you're going to make some fireworks. So I would like to, I would start with a little dot in the center. Okay, now I would do this. From that dot, I'm going to create a bunch of these. They're almost like uh, like spider legs. So you have all these lines coming off. Now they'd be a little more solid. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let me, let me do that again. Hold down. That was the practice run. That was the practice run. It didn't count. But here we go. So a little dot in the center. I would use that as my... I'm looking over at the screen. It looks like I'm so far away. There we go. So you would do this. Okay, and then, so your little, your little line, you could make a line, right? Like where that, like the line for the path that that little rocket, the little rocket took before it exploded. Now you could then take glitter and cover these up. Okay, something like that. <clears throat> others would be, you can make others like this. The, line, the lines come straight out. Okay. And a bunch of lines like that. Again, though, if you cover them up with glitter, it's going to look really cool if you have glitter. So you take all the different colors, you make them large, you make some small practice on a piece of paper first. Uh, I think I had I had a painting in here with with um, fireworks. Here's here's another way you can do these. You see these dandelions? <laughs> you could use those and change those into into fireworks. So I've got the little center and then little lines that come straight out. Okay, and then the ends have little balls on them or or little ovals. But that's another way. Okay. You can make these a lot larger. Practice a little bit. There's different ways you can make some cool, uh, cool fireworks. Okay. But anyway, hopefully that helped. But all right, everybody. Thank you so much, Cindy. Time for you to go swimming for sure. Cheryl, thank you for joining in today. You got it. Happy Fourth of July to all of you. I do appreciate you hanging out with me for a little while today. Uh, hope you all have an awesome and safe rest of the weekend and I will see you guys all very soon. Okay. Don't forget to send me pictures of your stuff. Hi, Liliana. What's happening? Sounds good. Paint another day. Okay, guys. <clears throat> have an amazing day. Bye-bye. See you guys all very soon.